are nothing. Holy Spirit, without you, we are nothing. Makalebra doza ningalaba dize. Ekra duze via gabadi keboshen telie gebo. Emanina nombra doze giandelie gebo. Let's call the Holy Spirit to come down, to come down, to come and grease our service. To come, he is the owner. We are just, we are just, we are, we are, we are just doing. We are, we are, we are servant. We are servant. Before him, we are servant. Mina dose ki yandeli agaba. Era duze ni yandeli gaba. E prasoso ni yandeli gebo. Let him come and take charge. Let him come and take charge of everything we are going to do here. Ambo zigi yandeli agaba. That he will perch on everybody's heart. And prepare our heart for that which God want to, want to give to us this evening. Ebra doze ni yandeli gaba shantali gaba. Malibro soto li gebo. Repra doze li gebo dize. Balaba santa li agaba. Maro satize viando li gebo. Nina no. Repra soto li gebo. Zente li gebo. Epra doze ni yande li kapa shata li gaba. Malibra doze li galaba shanta li gaba. Apra sata li agaba. Emba li agaba dize. Refra kasata li yende li gebo. Manina no. Bradoza ni yande li agaba. Ika libro soto li gebo. Nina no umbrado, Daniel chapter 1 verse 17. As for these four children, God gave them knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all vision and dreams. It is only God that can give us this. If we can catch the wisdom of God, if we can catch it, oh, our life will not remain the same. We need wisdom to go about our daily life. We need God's wisdom. We need God's knowledge and understanding from the Lord to be able, to be able, to be able to, 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 to decipher the mystery behind businesses. It is the wisdom of God that can enable, enable us to, to do witty mission. A lot of questions that, 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 that is posed to man today it is only wisdom of God that can help us. Magibo zegi andali agaba. Rapra doze ni yende ligebo. Mepra suse ni yende ligebo. Bralaba sota liga lava zodali agaba. Menundolo seteli yende ligebo. Ebra sota li agaba dize. James chapter 3 verse 17. He said, but the wisdom that is from above is pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruit, without partiality, and without hypocrisy. Malibra so tali agaba. Embra doza li agaba. Oh Lord, this is what we pray for. That for every member of this church tonight, that the wisdom of God that is peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, we come upon us. The one that is full of mercy, so that you have mercy over us, O oh Lord. So that you have mercy over us, O oh Lord. Makiba zo deli yendeli kepo. Ebra dize man shatali yendeli gaba. Embra doze ni yendeli gebo. Raka libra doze ni yendeli agaba. Epra soto li gebo. Reni ne manun se teli agaba dize. Epra si kalaba jandali gebo. Repra duzo vi yendeli gebo. Embra nana maguzo vi yegebo lize. Repra satali agaba laba shantali agaba. Ipra doze li yendeli egrebo dize. Mali pra satali agabo dize. E kali kalabadozo. Father Lord, we call for your mercy, O oh God. Father, have mercy on your children. Those that are here physically and those that are worshiping with us online. Those that are joining us online. Father Lord, we pray for mercy to come on everybody in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Ebra duze ni andeli egebo. Ebra santa li agaba. Ema ne masonto li egebo dize. Bradosa kabashanta li agaba dize. Alabadanda laba shata li agaba. Apra sota li agaba. Andeli agaba dize. Isaiah 54 verse 2 to 10. Isaiah 54. Let me uh, Verse 2. We want to pray for enlargement and breakthrough. We want to pray for enlargement. We pray for individual. We pray for the church. We pray for the nation. Regarding enlargement, we don't have to remain the same. Our life, spiritual growth, our life, physical need, and material need, even our health. Father Lord, it, it, it says, enlarge the place of thy tent and let them stretch forth the curtains of thy inhabitation. Spread not length thy cord and strengthen thy sake. For thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left hand, and thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles, and make the desolate city to be inhabited. Fear not, for thou shalt not be ashamed, neither be thou confounded. For thou shalt not be put to shame, for thou art 
forget the shame of thy youth and shall not remember the reproach of thy widowhood anymore. For thy maker is thy husband, the Lord of hosts is his name. And thy redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, the God of the whole earth, shall be, shall he be called. For the Lord hath called thee as a woman forsaken and grieved in spirit, and a wife of youth. When thou vast refused, said the Lord. For a small moment have I forsaken thee, but with great mercy will I gather thee in the name of Jesus. That shall be our Lord this evening in the name of Jesus. In a little rot I had hid my face from thee, but for a moment, but with everlasting kindness I will have mercy on thee, said the Lord, the Redeemer. This is the word of the Lord towards us this evening. This is the word of the Lord towards us this evening. This is the word of the Lord towards us this evening. Father, Lord God, enlarge us, O Lord, according to your word. Jabez call, O God, who said, enlarge my coast, enlarge my coast, and increase our territory. Father, in our businesses, in our finances, in our in our spiritual walk with you, O oh God. Father, Lord, enlarge us in the name of Jesus. As a nation, O oh God, everything that is affecting this nation, Father, O oh Lord, we come against it. We want growth in this nation. We want development in this nation. We want the hand of the Lord to come upon Nigeria, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. That the hand of the Lord will be heavily on our leaders and give them wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to be to be able to, 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 to lead us rightly in the name of Jesus. All policy makers and decision makers in this country, they receive insight by the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus so that they will be making right decision, the decision that we move Nigeria forward, the decision that we, that we bring the name of the Lord, that we raise the name of the Lord high in this nation in the name of Jesus. Makepa in a manose gian de legebo, rapra dos and in the licapa, melela rosa teliando legebo, ifarica satalia gabadize, ragadize, everything that is wrong with our economy from this moment on is everything that is wrong with our economy. Everything solution comes to it in the name of Jesus. Solution come from heaven in the name of Jesus. Malibra dos and yagaba, as it happened in the time of old in the Bible, so shall it be. It will just happen suddenly like that, suddenly like that, and everything will change. For the glory of Almighty God. For the glory of Jesus Christ, who has laid down his life to give us a quality life. God says, the Bible says, He has come to, but I have come to give life, to give life abundant. The kind of life that He gave you so quality. Oh Lord, anyone that is living short of this life. Father, we pray that help will come from every source for such person in the name of Jesus. We are new man. All of us, because Christ dwells in us, we are new man. Ah, and because Christ dwells in us, it is, it is absolutely illegal. For, for, for alien thing to creep into our life, into our body, into our spirit, and into our soul. Therefore, we're going to address every spirit of infirmity in this house tonight, this evening. We are going to address every spirit of infirmity in the name of Jesus. Every form of sicknesses and disease in the life of God's people. We come against it in the name of Jesus. We come against it. The Bible says our body is the temple of the Lord. And anything that we destroy, he will destroy Let's begin to rebuke every sicknesses and disease in the life of God's people. Exodus chapter 23 verse 5. Um, 25. Exodus chapter 23 verse 25. He said, And ye shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless thy bread and thy water. And we take sicknesses away from the midst of thee. Every sickness and diseases. All of them, no matter whatever may be the cause. We come against them right now. Oh God, let them be removed from our life in the name of Jesus. Father, oh Lord, with, with, without sound mind, without sound health, everything that has to do with our health, mental health, physical health, 
even spiritual health, oh Lord, grant unto us sound health in the name of Jesus. Mali bradoza niandeli yagaba, ekratuzo liyege bodize, iva libra doze niandeli gaba, the one that we know and the one that we, we do not know, any form of medical condition in God's people's life. Father God, we pray that God will heal them right now in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, touch everybody. Touch every soul. Touch every spirit. Any areas of our life we need healing, O oh Lord. Heal us completely in the name of Jesus. Jeremiah chapter 33 verse 6. He said, Behold, I will bring health and cure. And I will cure them. And I will reveal unto them the abundance of peace and truth. That is the word of God. He said he will bring cure. He will bring health. Eh, that disease that have divided all medical attention. I command in the name of Jesus that cure comes on it right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Those chronic ailments that are ageless. Chronic ail ailments that have been there for a long time. That doesn't want to budge. We pray. We pray that in the name of Jesus they disappear. They disappear in the name of Jesus. Deuteronomy 7 15 says, And the Lord will take away from thee all sicknesses, and I will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt, which thou knowest upon thee, but we lay them upon them that hate thee. He said, The Lord will take away from thee all sicknesses. All. All without any exception. And that is, the po that is the heart of God for every one of us tonight. We pray for every member of this church. Nobody shall be sickly again in the name of Jesus. And those that are sick, healing come to their body in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Maki prasota ni andoli egebo. Ebra doze ni endeli kaba shata li gaba. Enduzo vi endeli egrebo dize. Ebra na amazon dali agabaro. Rembra doze ni endeli kaba shanta li gaba. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Ebra doze ni endeli gaba. Ah, God has, God is doing it. God is doing it. There is healing in the house already. Ebra doze ni endeli gaba. There is healing in the house already. And it's not limited to this house. Every member, wherever they are, the hand of the Lord is touching them right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. With this healing, oh Lord, we need peace of mind. We need peace of mind. Yeah, Prados and Yandali Gaba. Father, we need peace in this land. We need peace in our church. We need peace in everywhere, oh God. Let there be peace. Let's pray for peace, oh Lord. Father, the peace of the Lord that passeth all understanding, grant unto us, oh God. When we are at peace, we will have, we will have the, the sanity. The, that sound mind to serve the Lord. Makiba Zondeli Egebo. James chapter 29. James chapter 29, verse 11. For I know the thought that I think towards you, um, said the Lord. For I know the thought that I think towards you, said the Lord. Thought of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. Sorry, it is not James. But Jeremiah, sorry. To give you an expected end. Maradoze ni andeli egaba. E praso seli andeli gebo. Re pradoze ni andeli gaba. Thought of peace. God wants us to be at peace. Fara baduze ni andeli egebo. Araba laba shatali egaba. E praso toli egebo. Re mani na non gradoze ni andeli gebo. E praso tali egaba. E pradoze ni andeli egebo. Re gerebo seteli gebo. Andeli egaba. Andala ba satali egaba. Ah, Lord, thank you. Thank you. Philippians chapter 4 verse 7 says, And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. Father, let there, let there be peace of God in our heart, in our home, in our businesses, in our hearts, and in everything that we do. Let there be peace of the Lord in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Makro Satoli Egebo. Ebra dozeni endeli Egebo. Regalaba jata ligaba. Manundeli apra sota ligaba duzo. Efra nunzeli agaba dize. Re 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 rebo sete ligebo. Menina non bradoza ni kapa. Ma pra sota ligaba duze. Re pra sota liando ligebo. Ebra dozeni endeli Egebo. Father Lord God, we pray. O Lord, grant us peace, O Lord. Grant us peace, O Lord. E kasusani andoli Egebo dize. Mina non pradoza ni kapashanta li agaba. Rara wa sota li ando li gebo. Rem pradoza ni ende li gebo. E malaba shanta li gaba. Ma kadoza ni ende li gebo. 
Reka satali andali agaba evre doze ni endeli ekre seteli gebo rapa li pradoza ni andali gaba e prasantali agaba e prasandali agaba ribo si endeli gebo Father Lord God, we want to pray for help from above. Lord, help for individual, help for church, and help for the nation. Oh God, we cannot do we cannot do things by ourselves. We cannot do things by ourselves. But God will help us. Now, the Bible says in the book of Psalm 41, verse 6, it says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in time of need. Who doesn't need the help of God at this point in time? No one. Father, Lord, in every area of our life that we need help, Lord, let help come to everyone in the name of Jesus. Let help come to everyone in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, we pray for our nation. Our nation needs help, oh God. Our nation needs help, oh God. Our economy sector, the health sector, the educational sector, even our politics. Everything in this nation, we need help. Father, oh God, let there be help from above. Help that, oh, divine help, oh God, that is what we are praying for. Help, divine help, help that will only come from you, oh God. Maka Santalia Gabadi Zemandoli Egebo. Ebranaba Shantalia Gabadi Ze. Ebraduzo Niendeli Egebo. Ebrado Salia Grabadu Salaba Shantalia Gaba. Endali Andoli Gebo. Rempaduzo Niendeli Gebo. Revradoza Niambalaba Sheki Agibo. Mina non Bradoza Niandali Gaba. Ekebo Se. Father, we pray that you help us, O God. And Alaba Santa Liagaba. And Oliegabo Sheki Araba Santa Ligabo. Embaro Seteliegabo. Rida dos and Deliagaba. Nina non Bradoza Liagabadize. E Calaba Santo Liegabo. Embraduzo ni and Deligaba. Rakapa Kusofiegabo. Help us, O Lord, O God. Help us, O Lord, in our finances, in our businesses, in our homes, O God. In every marriage, O Lord. In every, in every works. Oh God, we want you to help us. We want you to help us in the academics, in the academics, in the life of the education of our children. Father, we need help. Father, help us, oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. So that shall be our lot in the name of Jesus. Ah, Lord, thank you. Father, Lord, thank you. Let the righteousness of the Lord come upon this nation. The righteousness of the Lord, let it come upon this nation. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 34 says, Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin condemns any people. Father, O God, let the righteousness of God be enthroned, O Lord, in the name of Jesus. So that there will be perfect peace. The, the perfect peace, like the one, the, the, the Bible says in the book of Isaiah, Chapter 26, verse 3. He said, you keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Father, oh God, help us to be able to trust in you. Help us to be able to, so that our mind will be fixed on you. God is not a joker. Anytime he calls for a meeting, he's always there. And I know he's here, and he has something important for every one of us. Now let's begin to pray that the Holy Spirit will help us so that we don't miss out on that which God wants us to get tonight. As the word will be coming to us, as the teaching will be coming to us, we want clarity, we want understanding, we want clarity and understanding and insight and revelation knowledge of the word of God. Let there be clarity, O God, to your word. As Rabbi Sotalia Gabadize, give us understanding so that we understand we, we will go beyond the, the, the realm of knowing and to the point whereby we understand in the name of Jesus we thank you Lord we know that every prayer that you have put across to you you have answered for the few many seconds let's begin Let's begin to speak in tongue. Let's begin to speak in tongue. Let's begin to speak. Let's begin to speak in tongue. Let's begin to pray in spirit. In Rabasugi Ambradoza ni andali gaba malebro sotoli Ambradoza giyagibo rika papa busof yendeli yegabo es radoza yendeli yegabo. Let's generate strength in our inner man. Ma kisa suza ninda de ma suza ni Ambradoza ni yegabo ma re prasota li gaba rababa basha tali yegaba doze kiyago re manong radoza giyaka pakuko malebra doze ni andeli yegabo re prasosa re bradoza ni yendeli yegabo re kaka kaka kaka. Sosedi yangaba, mina nana sosedi yandeli gebo. 
Masha tali andoli agaba. Regrado sini andoli agabo. Empradu zeni andeli kapa shatali agaba. Zenuno no broso toli agabo. In kalabazo zeni andeli agabo. Thank you, Father Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Father, oh Lord, as we progress in this service, we want the Spirit of God to move with us. We want the Spirit of God to move with us at every point of this um, 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 service. Father, Lord, we want the hand of God. We want to see the hand of God. As we go into praise and worship, let heaven worship with us in Jesus' name. Oh God, and when the word will come, the word will come directly to and touch our need in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, because if you answer our prayer, in the name of Jesus, we are prayed. Let the people of God say amen. Amen. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah. In the mood of worship, let's begin to thank the Lord the more. Let's thank Him for all that He has done. Father, we appreciate Your name, Lord Jesus. You are the great and mighty Father. Thank you for your love so strong in us, Lord Jesus. We bless you. Thank you for being in this room with us. Thank you for your mighty hand upon us. Father, we give you glory. We worship your name, Lord Jesus. You are our King. You are Lord, our Redeemer. We thank you. We can thank you enough, Lord Jesus. Somebody bless the Lord. Thank you for all that is done. Thank you for your outpouring in this room. We bless you, oh God. Thank you, Jesus. We bless your name, Jesus. You are mighty in this room. We bless you, oh God. Thank you, Father.
circumstance you were lifted high above I have more than the sun Ah
behold him till we are full. We behold him till we are full. We behold him till we are full. We behold him. We behold him. We behold until we are full. We behold. We behold until we are full. We behold him. tonight we keep beholding you we keep looking unto you we keep relying on you until we are formed in the image of God and to a full stature of who he is we behold until we have formed to God and that is the essence of our coming together in the place of study that we may behold until we are formed in the place of study tonight let there be a formation that looks like what you want us to be let purpose be formed in our lives, in our hearts, in our being, in the name of Jesus. Take all the glory because at the end of tonight's gathering again, it would have been said that we have been formed in the image that you want us to be. Thank you, Father. Be glorified today. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. Can you say hello to your neighbor for me this evening? You are welcome this evening. Hallelujah. Your timer will start reading afresh when I say start. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> amen and amen. <laughs> A quick announcement. This Friday is the vigil for this month. This Friday is the vigil for this month. Please plan your time and your schedule and be there. Attend. And for some of you that are not in the neighborhood, make sure you attend uh, by all means virtual. But it's good to be there for all of us that we can please it's good to be there so this all night for the month of sept of the month of october it's this friday and um, um sunday is the communion service for this month it's going to be communion sunday this month um i've been thinking of what's going to happen at communion and i say okay i, I mean i I'm looking at what's going to happen at communion. I'm looking at what's going to happen at communion. I'm looking at... <laughs> Why is somebody smiling? <laughs> so I'm looking at what's going to happen at communion. God will lead us arise. And God will lead us, give us a voice. Will give us a lead. He's going to speak to us at the communion. And he's going to deliver the mind of God to us. Hallelujah. That looks proverbial. It's because of somebody that I'm actually using the proverb. Hallelujah. <laughs> amen and amen. So communion for the month of October is around the corner. And that's about that. What other announcement is pending? Uh, 
So you, every other announcement will be communicated to us. We'll see it on the, on the, um, uh, if you're not on the WhatsApp group, you should be in one department or the other. You will have the communication. Hallelujah. Okay, so tonight we're going back to look at um, the thought we have been going through. We started last two weeks ago before we had um, someone speak to us last week. So Brother Jerry spoke to us last week and it was a wonderful time in the presence of the Lord. So today we continue on the thoughts on the series of the envy. Envy is the thoughts that we have been looking at. Uh, the seed of this content and how to uproot it. Now, what it is about envy and how did it come to mind? It came to my mind that we should look at these thoughts of some of the things that can destroy us. Some of the things that can destroy us. So, envy is one of it in other ways. There are so many other. It includes um, bitterness. It includes uh, unforgiveness. It includes many of those things in line. In fact, I was speaking with somebody today and somebody, something something that I may, I, I already have a thought about it, but I've been thinking, should it be a Bible study? Should it be a Sunday service? And it is called apathy. A-P-A-T-H-Y. Apathy. Whether it is spiritual, whether it's physical, whether it is anything, you're wondering, now why is pastor like this these days? I don't know why I'm like this these days, but I think... <laughs> So, apathy is one of it. Um, so, bitterness is one of it. And so, when, when uh, we had the anniversary of uh, the Stone Church Lagos, Dunamis, and Pastor Alex went in the direction of the thought, I knew I was on course. I knew I was on course. Right, I knew I was on course. <laughs> and, yeah, it clicked in my spirit that, okay, you are not actually um, off course on this, Okay. Dealing with offenses, that was what we, Pastor Alex, looked like at, right? And so, and it was one of the things that I had on my list that I wanted to uh, bring to our attention that we should deal with. So this evening, we, we did part one last week, and that is understanding what envy really is. And so we, in that time, um, we learned uh, what envy is. It's all about, uh, that was when we were talking about, uh, I envy you, I don't envy you, and we talked about what thoughts could be at the back of anybody's mind when you're talking about envy. And so, uh, we broke it down, and then to look at uh, comparing what envy is and what the, uh, um, remind me, uh, admiration is, so that we'll see what envy looks like, what admiration looks like. Uh, we saw the different uh, dangers of uh, having to say, okay, I, admiration in relation to, we compared it with bitterness and I extend. We compared it with, um, what again? For those of you that were in that class, what again did we compare it with? Those of you that have notes. Hmm? Who's there? Who wants to tell us? Those of you that have notes, who remembered a bit of it? Uh, because I know you must remember this, and that's why it is three-part series, so that you will, you will hear it and hear it and hear it again. So, we saw that envy is not the same thing as jealousy. We saw that envy is not the same thing as admiration. We saw that envy is not the same thing as bitterness. We were able to compare Ben them a little and see some disparities, what makes them different from the other. And through it all, we saw what the biblical place of what envy really is. So opening the Bible, we saw what envy is. So, and so our text, which was our main text for this series, is Proverbs um, chapter what now? For those that were in class. Proverbs 14.30. So on Sunday, I will ask you, to repeat, to give the memory verse. On a Sunday, we will give the memory verse. Not on a Tuesday. On a Sunday. Proverbs 14. Proverbs 14. So can we look at it again? Can we look at it again? So let's look at it. This I'm not, I've decided that when I'm doing Bible study now, I will not be rushing and quoting you scripture. We will do class, real class. 
For the next thing I want to graduate to now is making slides for my Bible study. That's the next thing I want to graduate to. And so that um, we will not just talk about it. We will do action plans. We will have action plans for all the things that happens at Bible study. Okay, so uh, this scripture says, A sound act is the life of the flesh, but envy the rottenness of the bones. But envy the rottenness of the bones. And we saw other translations. Uh, NKJV said something, and that's why he said, A sound act is the life of the body, but envy is the rottenness. No, this is, uh, is the rottenness of the bone. Can we see, uh, did we see NIV? Yeah, NIV was what I said. Uh, a heart of at peace gives life to the body, but envy rots the bone. That, that's a text that encapsulates the entire thought that we are looking at. I intend that at the end of this series, I might be able to come up with a small ebook that might put all this together and make it available for uh, you. On, I mean, you can download it and have it, but I will have to work on it. So that it's, it's, it's making sense to you as you are reading it, not as I'm preaching it. But here is it. Understand this part of it. And that is what we're going to look at today. That envy has the power to destroy. Envy, envy has a power to destroy. And that's why we're looking at the destructive power of envy. That's what we're going to focus on today. The destructive power of envy. Envy. The destructive power of envy. We have come to an understanding that envy is an emotion that we feel. And that emotion, it, is, it goes beyond the emotion and has an action behind it. We were able to uh, establish that Cain and Abel had that situation. And based on Cain and Abel's situation, there was a clarity that envy made the brother to go ahead and not just admire as we think his admiration. He went ahead to say, I'd rather be in this position and you not be in the position and kill the brother. You remember the story about Cain and Abel? Good. So today we shall look at the deep, we we'll look deeper into the dangers of envy. When left unchecked, when left unchecked, it's very deep. And very dangerous. The Bible shows us repeatedly that envy is one of the most dangerous emotions. And we harbor it, all of us, one after the other. At some point, we have slipped into envy at something. But why are we doing this study? That you may be able to check your motive at all times and check. Is it envy has graduated to the point of envy in which I am care, I'm, I'm, I'm less concerned whether the person is destroyed or not? As your admiration slipped, as your jealousy slipped, as your, as your situation of uh, wanting somebody else's things slipped from whatever it is to envy. Tonight, the impact of envy we'll see in James chapter 3, verse 16. So this segment is James chapter 6, chapter 3. Verse 16. We read it last week. We're going to concentrate on it as the basis of looking at the various things that are under this. That is the destructive power of envy. You can put it as the consequences of envy if you want. You can put it as the dangers of envy and how it leads to destruction if you want. But I have put it as, for tonight, it is the destructive power of envy. James 3.16. For where you have envy, look at it, where you have envy, who wrote this? It's not me, it's the Holy Spirit that wrote it through man and wrote it and put it in the Bible that you may see, that you may read it. So let's read it together. It said, where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder and every evil practice. Can you see the things that are associated with where you find envy? Where you find envy, wherever you find envy and selfish ambitions, there you will find disorder, every evil practice. So three things you will find where there is envy. Where there is envy, it leads to disorder. 
in every evil practice. That's the last thing. Every evil practice. So, envy, when it exists, every evil practice will come along. Where envy exists, every evil practice will come along. So, these three dangers are what I will expand. Number one, every evil practice is existing where there is envy. So, envy leads to every evil practice. Envy, envy leads to disorder and every evil practice. Maybe that's how you put it. Let's put disorder and every evil practice as it's written here. Envy leads to disorder and every evil practice. One. Two. Envy affects our relationship with God. Envy affects our relationship with God. And number three. Envy breeds bitterness. Envy breeds bitterness. Envy, give, envy gives birth to bitterness and self-destruction. Gives birth to bitterness and self-destruction. Breeds bitterness and self-destruction. So, number one, envy leads to disorder, like I said. Envy does not operate alone. When we allow it in our hearts, it opens the door for all manner of behaviors. It opens the door for things like jealousy. It opens the door for things like hatred. When envy is left unchecked, it says, it makes it clear in that scripture that it exists and gives disorder. Um, can we see an IV of this? And this is NIVA. Let's see an IV of this. Let's see an IV translation of this. This NIV. Uh, I'm, I'm not seeing something that I would love to. Uh, envy exists. The, uh, there's one VAC translation that says, follows with. You know, there's one translation where envy, when there's envy, it follows with. Let's see. For where jealousy and selfish ambitions exist, there is disorder, unrest, rebellion, and every evil thing and morally degrading practice. Ah, Amplified, you are strong. Amplified is very strong. <laughs> but that's beautiful. So, when, like I said, we're looking at the uh, dangers, the dangers of envy, which is the destructive power that exists in envy. It leads to every evil practice from this scripture. It's an active force and produces chaos anywhere it is, exists. Very active and produces any, it produces chaos. Where there is envy, there is always chaos. Where there is envy, there is always chaos. <laughs> When Cain envied Abel, which was the first mother, mother, M-U-R-D-E-R, -E in the Bible, rather than having a relationship with God that the situation should have pointed him to, that thing pointed him to killing the brother. So envy came as, for example, let's look at that thoughts in Genesis chapter 4 verse 3. When God says, accept your own offering and he did not accept your own offering. I'm thinking that if it is not something else I should have thought about what more can I do to make my own offering be acceptable. Abi, what more can I do to make sure that my offering is acceptable next time when I come to present. So, if it is not something, why will I kill the person whose offering was accepted? Why should I get to a point where... So, when Cain's um, was not accepted and Abel was accepted, as Abel's was accepted, I should be 
um, what do you call it now? I used we use the word. I, we should, we, I should admire the fact that this guy had a kind of relationship that made his own acceptance. And I should now aim at having such that my own will be accepted. And not that, okay, yours was accepted, then I should take you off the road that mine may be accepted next time. We do that a lot of times. We do it a lot of times. Because envy turns your attention away from God. Right? And brings you into an inward frustration. And that inward frustration and insecurity makes you fight the other person. You shift your attention away from God. And no focus on a frustration internally. And your insecurity now makes you go. And what do you do? Sinfulness is going to happen. And that is what is referred to as the evil practice that will happen. If envy is not checked, you begin to have that um, frustration from within. And that from frustration from within gets you insecure around us. Let me be practical about this. this is, I'm not talking about people outside. I'm not talking about somebody else. I'm talking about us as individuals. I'm talking about me. Right. I begin to now feel frustrated that this person is, and then I feel insecure. And from feeling insecure, what do I do? I begin to have what you call, um, which I'm going to get to, I begin to have cold shoulder towards such people. Not just cold shoulder, I begin to have avoidance. And from avoidance, I begin to have discussions, which are the gossip that comes up later. I'm telling you the graduation. Real or real? You remember when Joshua, I mean when Joseph, sorry, told his brothers these, these dreams. You remember that story? He told them. He told them, okay, let's look at uh, Genesis, Genesis chapter 37. Let's read a couple, a few, a few from there. Genesis 37. From Genesis 37, from verse 3. Let's read a little. In fact, it was when the father bought him a coat of multi, many colors. That became the wala. That became the wala. You know, when you now have a ah, coat of many colors, don't shell it. You are in trouble. Father bought you coat of many colors. Eh? <laughs> Look at it. So, Israel loved Joseph. Ah, oh, they show it. Eh? That's the undoing. <laughs> he showed it that he loved Joseph. More than. So, somebody will say, it's the father's fault. Why will he show them that he loved it's the man's fault that he showed them. Why will he show them that he loved? But if envy no day, if he show that he loved, what should you do? If we're looking at what you should do, it should be that, what can I do to be loved in like manner? Turning you in that, oh, I should change something to get better. So look at it. So he was the son of his old age. Also, he made him of Tunic of many colors. You all are enter from there. The envy grew into bitterness. And what did they do? They carried him to go and kill him. Remember the story? Maybe if you jump to um, somewhere like verse 20, there about, maybe verse 20. Because it's from verse 3 all the way down. So, come therefore, let us now kill him and cast him into some pit. From is that, is that admiration? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's all. Is that admiration? You see the admiration <laughs> and envy uh, completely. Eh? I admire. I want to be like, but not killing you to be like. The admiration is to be inspired. It leads to inspiration. When I admire, then I am inspired. But when I admire, to take you off the road, to be able to become, I, may not even be, I can't even become who you are. But just to take you out of the road, that is envy. And it does happen. So, look at it here in this place. So, they took him and said, we're going to kill him. And we shall say, some wild beasts have devoured him. 
We shall see what will become of his dreams. So it's even his dreams. So you that you're always a dreamer, you're always a dreamer. Oh, when this one happens, we will see how you will fulfill the dream when we have killed you. So please, let's really, let's really, you know, the way, we don't think like this when we actually envy, when we are envious of people. We don't think like this. But let's think so that it will help you when you are alone to be able to think. So when you now kill him, does the dream now become your dream? Are you with me? Does that dream now become your own dream? It is his race. It is his dream. It is his life. So his dream is different from your dream. His life is different from your life. We all came wired with talents. We all came with wired with two, five, one talents. That is, you came with our different graces when we came. So you killed him and took him off the way. Does not mean you will now own his own talent. I say this thing often in places when I have to do some coaching. Some I say it as simple as you lighted a candle. You put light on the candle and you're holding the candle. And many candles are not lighted. And you did something, you lighted somebody else's own candle. Has he reduced the light on your candle? Because I lighted Esther's candle, did it diminish the light on my candle? But what do we do? It is we do not light that candle because we concluded that if we light the candle, my own light will be reduced. My candle will burn faster. Is it, is it that my candle will burn faster? Okay, my the bright is it not even added brightness when you light his own candle, our own candle? In a dark place, I light your candle, I light your candle, I light your candle, I light your candle, I light your candle. Is it going to be brighter? We all see clearer. But no, this is what happened here. Rather than light other people's candle, we kill. This is what happened to this Bible. And it's envy. So number one destructive power of envy is that envy will lead to disorder. And every evil practice. Every evil practice. And what are the every evil practice? Number one, there is going to be division and strife. Division and strife will come. I've tried to explain it when I was saying that you begin to do what Yorubas call bonku bonku to one another. <laughs> I don't know how to interpret it in English. Who has English for bonku bonku? <laughs> because that's the one I know. <laughs> English, you know, with my papa language. And they try speaking, right? <laughs> bonku, bonku. Ah, you don't know bonku, bonku? Okay, bonku, bonku. Write it there. <laughs> oh, basically, it is what you call relational breakdown. It's a breakdown in relational, in the relationship. It breaks down relationship. Some of you that will see this thing online after. You will now call me and say, what is Bonku Bonku? Please don't ask me. Ask somebody else, okay? <laughs> oh. <laughs> and so, Hami, have you heard these words before? French become rivals. Have you heard that kind of word before? That's what happens. French become rivals. That is division and strife. That is all manner of evil practice. They're divided. And who suffers? It's the community that suffers. The people around them that suffers. Hmm? Another one is the moral decay. In when, when you are talking about, when you talk about all manner of all manner of practices. Envy eats away all the moral compasses of every, of some people. They don't care whether it is by crook or by me. They must just all the moral compass, all the values that people have, when envy sets in, they throw away values and do anything by all means. L including slander, including lying, including gossip, including anything to malign the image of that person in order that they may just have what the person has. And they can't have what the person has. Even if you have what the person has, it's not the same measure, it's the same quantity. 
If I give you one million naira right now as we stand here, what you will do with the one million in one month is different from what this person will do with the one million in one month. And so if your one million finishes tomorrow and his own is still remaining, you see him. Thinking that his own was more than your own. Every evil practice spirit includes spiritual stagnation. It keeps you at the place where you are not growing anymore. You are not growing. You are just, you are just, you are just stagnated. It's hard to walk in envy and walk with God. Though. Very hard to walk in envy and walk with God. Think about that guy. Uh, Saul and David, that story. When Saul, when David was named the next king after Saul, you know what Saul did? Saul started to run up time to look for him. Remember that story? King Saul began to look for him. That's uh, 1 Samuel um, 9, 18. 1 Samuel 18, verse 6 and 9. Let's see from verse 6 to 9. Let's see 1 Samuel 18, verse 6 to 9. To explain every evil practice. This is point one from these dangers. To every evil practice. Look at it. Now, it had happened as they were coming home, when David was returning from the slaughter of the Philistines, that the women... While I'm on work, go on. Something calling. Especially when you just come up, when pastor comes up stage and says, that was a wonderful drama. Oh, Shakana stones, very beautiful. Clap for them again. Kinoashi. Kinoashi gone. Kinoashi gone. Yeah? When she not live with one and she movie. Eh? You know what she? Eh? Oh, lack depth. Oh, lack, you know? And you just, you just, you just, you just malign. Ah. Go and learn how to talk. Oh. If you hear this, after, if you go and replay, if you don't hear it now, hear it again. Eh? This mouth. Oh, they pray. The, the choir, the choir. That was a wonderful song. The choir had done brilliantly. Well. Let's clap for the choir. Pa, 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 pa. And then book out. Uh, is it not sing? That's why you did not come for Riazza for every for one month. And you think you can just do it. Did you put the same energy? Did you put the same time? Did you put the same? But no, you now envy. On the base of envy, you will now dress down. Who says you should not. Um, what they call it now? Uh, 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 constructively look at. Nobody has said you should, cannot constructively look at uh, what could be improved. But excuse me. Here in this story, I think I went. I went off just a little. <laughs> so <laughs> this was that off that I went. It's part of the reason why I'm teaching this studio. Eh? Because I'm not talking to angels, I'm talking to human beings, and you are the one I'm talking to. This sermon is for you, not for anything. That's why you must hear your own practical example inside it. Okay? If I were talking to King David and King Saul now, what's our business? Talking to King David, you are the ones who to be talked to. It is for us. So if I'm saying it and you have not found your own inside, you look for it oh, because it's inside it. Your own. It's inside this. My own day inside. When I was studying it, I took my time to repent of my own because I get. I get plenty. I get. A lot of us get. So pick your own and deal with it. So look at it. So when they were praising uh, David, go to verse 7. Verse 7. And in verse 7, what happened? So, the women sang as they danced and said, Saul has slain his thousands and David has slain ten thousand. Verse 8. We're going to verse 9. 8 and 9. So, then Saul was very angry. Step 1. And the saying displeased him. Okay. Step 2. So, as we're saying. <laughs> okay, for those of you that don't understand you, but that's so they do person. Eh? 
So when you are now not grad when you are graduating at this level, you not quickly contain yourself. Eh? You are going, you are going. Hmm? This place and say they have ascribed to David ten thousand, and to me they have ascribed only thousand. Now what more can he have but the kingdom? That's what's left for this guy. Before he gets the kingdom, I start killing him. Verse nine. So Saul hid David from that day. Oh, mark it. But she man sonny slang slang you die. But the mark you do I've marked you. You cross this path. I will show. So he marked him. He marked him and started going after him. He started going after him. Saul allowed envy to turn his heart away from God. He became obsessed with how to destroy David. See. Some of us are obsessed of how to find fault and destroy certain people in our midst. Not just in our midst, in our environment. You will find the fault. You are so obsessed that his downfall must show. We are so obsessed with it. That any little thing that the person brings up, we will find fault in it. I am only telling you, don't come and ask me, Pastor, so when I now did this, and I did this to this person, and I said, Sort it out by yourself. Eh? Right? Don't let it be. Let, let it graduate. It's, I, mean, I mean, don't let it fester. Don't let it, don't let it get to that point in your life. So, number one is what? What do I call number one in this place? Envy leads to disorder and every evil practice. Can you see the every evil practice here? So, let's go to number two. So that, um, because I told you, this Bible study, I will just go step by step. Where we reach, we will stop. Right? Before I leave that place, your takeaway from this number one point. Eh? Envy makes you focus on destroying other people rather than building yourself. You focus on destroying other people rather than build yourself. So, in the end, you, uh, your potential is sabotaged because your energy is built on destroying somebody. You are not building yourself. Your energy is, I want to destroy. I cannot. So you are not building yourself. You are stagnated. So the heat that you should divert to your enlargement, to, that, to your, you now divert that heat to this person's downfall. Oh my, what a fall, Shadi. God help us in Jesus' name. Two, envy affects our relationship with God. The scripture attached to that is 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 18. It affects our relationship with God. 1 Corinthians 12, 18. God has done what? has set the members, all of us, your hand, your leg, your feet, your mouth, your everything, he has set the members in this body. Just as he pleased. You could have been the high, immaculate. And so when you want to walk as the high, you will be rolling on the ground because you don't have legs. Hmm? I could have been the legs. And as you are the eye, you want to walk. And then you blink at me and I'll come and carry you to go. Every part of the body is doing its own work. <laughs> it affects, it, it makes, so we are not able to appreciate the other person, the ability of the other person, thereby affecting our relationship with God. We have been strategically placed in one another's lives. Whether it's in our career, whether it's in our families, whether it's in the ministry, he knows what's best for us as individuals. But what does envy do? He blinds us to see the truth in what the highest work is, what the legs work is, what the nose work is, what the eyelashes work is. This eyelash is there. 
for those of you that have a uh, mustache, that mustache, for those that have, it does it. For those that don't have, ah. <laughs> so, instead of embracing that grace that is in that other person, we now, and thereby, our relationship with God is affected. It doesn't just affect our relationship with one another. It affects our relationship with God. And why do I mean it affects our relationship with God? It affects our relationship with God because we are now rebellious. Rebellion sets in. That God, you don't make me well. You made that person different from me. That person was made better than I am made. Eh? Especially female. So the person was made better than I was I'm made. <laughs> and then so that person is tall. And then for the ladies who are also looking for a guy, tall, handsome, and collected, right? You know, and then you are... <laughs> It's more looking like you lack trust in what God has blessed you with. So you want that person's own, and I want it at all costs. And that is what rebellion is called. You are rebelling against God. That, oh, Moshe, you don't know how to do it. You should have made me. That is rebelling against the sovereignty of God. The sovereign God that made you, that saying you don't know how to. You know, you forget that you are unique in your own way. You forget. We forget our uniqueness. Oh, we're so unique. So, so unique in our own way. You, the uniqueness that cannot make me play chords on the keyboard like Brother Daniel. Are you here? That uniqueness that cannot make me, bro, like brother, brother Elvis, to be, to be, to be, you know, so smooth. Eh, that uniqueness, I don't have it, and I am not threatened by it. Can you get it? Not by any means. But no, you don't get time. I appreciate person who get time. But envy shows your dissatisfaction. In what you have been given, what you have been wired with, what you are able to do, you are dissatisfied. And what you want that person's own. And thereby you break down a relationship, not only with God, with the person. Yes or yes? Because person get time, you will not, you know, you will not stop talking to the person. I hope the people that are supposed to hear this are hearing you. Ah. Are you with me? Yeah. Are you here? Yeah. You remember those workers that went to the vineyard to work? <laughs> that story. Every time I read it, this is what it tells me. That's um, Matthew 20, from verse 1 down to 16. It was a parable of Matthew, Matthew 20, from verse 1 to 16. They came to the vineyard to work. So, you know, <laughs> this story, eh? Ah! All of you that are talking about life is not fair. You know, fair. <laughs> it cannot be. Huh? Look at this story. The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers to his vineyard. I will skip and skip. So let's go. So what happened? When he had agreed with the laborers for a dinaros, that is a, a value a day. That's how much. Let's say one million a day. That's the agreed. Let's agree. Let's say it's one million. It is one million a day, but you started from uh, 6 a.m. It's one million. As I was talking to Immaculate, your money is one million a day. And you say, yes, sir. And then you start working. Then he sent them, he sent Immaculate to go and work. And then Immaculate started working. And it went about the third hour. Let's say about 9 o'clock. That was 6 a.m., right? About 9 a.m., I come again. And saw some people standing. I do. And I said, ah, why are you not working? And they said, we want to work too now. Verse 4. And what did you do in verse 4? And said to them, you also, go into the vineyard. Go and join the maculate in the vineyard. I agree one million today. Yeah? <laughs> and then you went on. 
Go to verse 7. Go to verse 7. Okay, verse 5. Verse 5. And again, he went out about the sixth and then the ninth. So that is nine. Let's say by uh, 12 noon, he came and he said, Oh, Kempes, why are you standing there? Go and walk one million a day. And then when it was uh, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, are you, can you see? 6 a.m., 9 a.m., 12 noon, let's say 3 o'clock. He now looked and said, Jessica, go and walk one million a day. Ah. And he said to them, so when evening came, 6 p.m. came. And all of them gathered at 6 p.m. And he began to give people their reward. Don't let us preach a part of the sermon. Let's go straight to this part of it. Because I saw something that was interesting me to preach, but I'm not preaching it today. <laughs> and so, when those came... And when those came who were hired about the eleven hour, they came and received one million. The one that came in the morning received one million. So I gave Ibakulate one million. I gave Kempers one million. I gave Jessica one million. And they worked at different hours of the day. Uh -huh. What will you do? Let's go to verse 14, I think. Or oh, is it verse 14? No, verse, let's go to verse 10. Let's read from verse 10. 11, okay, yeah. And when they had received it, they complained. Ah, <laughs> Immaculate. How the complaint will be? <laughs> eh? <laughs> when Jessica, we just call, no, 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 collect one million as I collect. Ah. How's it going to be? Placard. No, we placard. You are very wicked. Is that, is that human resource practice? Eh? Which concert did I sign with you at the beginning of the work? I will give you one million. Abi, did I give you one million or not? <laughs> Which concert did I sign with Jessica? I will give you one million. I gave her one million. Ah. <laughs> but he answered one of them and said, Friend, I'm doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for a million naira? Take what is yours and go away. Ah, Otum plod for me. I wish to give to this last man the same as I've given you, because that's what my contract with him. Is it not lawful for me to do what I want with my money? <laughs> or is he is he your high is, or is, is your eye evil because I am good? I evacuate it down now. <laughs> Second of stones. Look at this story. <laughs> Look at this story. Ah! Hmm. This story is very deep. Hmm. 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 Because from this story, can you see that envy leads to you questioning God? You're questioning the God because he's the one that hired you and said, I'll give you one million. Envy now leads you to, ah, kilo you know, day. Begin to question God. Envy tricks you into thinking that someone else's success diminishes your own. Ah, this person collects one million, I collect million. My own is diminished. Ah, I mean, I want five hours. Show fear, go fear. <laughs> God's blessings are abundant and unique to you. What you have in someone else's life does not diminish what you have in your life. That's what this parable teaches us. His ways are higher than our ways, oh. And his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. That's Isaiah 55, verse 8 and 9. His ways are higher than our ways. And his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. Isaiah 55, 8 and 9 was clear about it. That for my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. And verse 9 says... That for as the heavens are higher than, than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. And my thoughts than your thoughts. So in, re, in, in clear details, you should understand if we don't put it into um, our 
everyday curriculum. At the time you begin to envy, when envy sets in, you are questioning God's authority. You are questioning God's fairness. You are questioning that his thoughts are sin. You, 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 your thought is more than his thoughts. God's blessings are never distributed equally. By our human sense, are never distributed equally. As simple as your proximity to lights indicates how, sh how bright the light is to you. You cannot say the sun that shines right now, wherever it's shining, it should still be bright here. It is already dark here. So where you are per time determines the level of blessing. And when I say where you are per time, in the things of God, it decides. It's fair as far as it's concerned. But to you, woman, you may see it as unfairness. Finally, every breeds bitterness and self-destruction. That's number three. It's on this number three that I'll be wrapping up today. And um, I will wrap up before we, before we close. So your time, you can off. Uh, because I'm going to give us four action, plan, action points before we go. So number three, which is that every breeds bitterness. It does every, if not, if every, uh, envy doesn't stay uh, contained in one place and does not graduate into something. No, envy doesn't. It will always breed bitterness. That's why Hebrews 12.15 was clear. Hebrews 12.15. Have uh, you noticed that I keep putting one scripture or the other to help us understand this thing more? So that you will refer to it and see and you draw the correlation. It's on this scripture, on this scripture that I'm putting, that I'm drawing my inference from. I'm not just drawing my inference from uh, what people say, but from this scripture. See to it that no one fails to obtain the grace of God, that no root of bitterness springs up and causes trouble. And by it may become defiled. So that no one fails, falls short of the grace of God. And that no bitterness root grows. No bitterness root grows. No bitterness root grows up. And what does bitterness root do? It causes trouble. That's what the scripture is saying. Let any lest any root of bitterness springing up will cause trouble, and by this many become defiled. Envy breeds bitterness. Envy it grows and breeds bitterness. This can lead to our own downfall as individuals, when we allow envy to fester, to keep on going. It changes our mindset. It changes our behavior. I begin to behave negatively. It, bitterness is the next stage of envy. And when bitterness sets in, every action that bitterness can generate, includes killing, comes up. Because bitterness addings the heart. He makes the person to, he secludes the person from joy. He secludes the person from peace because the person is bitter. How can peace and bitterness coexist? How can joy and bitterness coexist? God doesn't intend that they will both be. Peace, joy, and the, and, the, and the Holy Ghost is what God promises us. You know what bitterness does? Bitterness isolates us, puts us in isolation. When we are bitter, we push people away. We isolate ourselves. Emotionally, we isolate ourselves. Spiritually, we isolate ourselves. And it's envy that due to the point of bitterness. Why are you bitter if you are not envious? It was somebody, something, something that did not happen in any way. Something that happened to someone and you want it, but of course, that brings about 
and then you have admired somebody and you want the same and it hasn't come and you are not bitter against God on the matter. And being bitter against God on the matter, you begin to isolate yourself from the person that has that blessing. Are you with me? The person that has what you have admired and you desire to have and that has not come, you begin to isolate from the person. Yes or yes? Let's, practice, let's look at it practically. Why is it that that person who has what you actually wish to have you are now not greeting the person. Why? Why? That means I'm just being practical here. When the person is coming, you avoid. Why? This topic is that you may, we may search ourselves and get better. I've never said that you are there. Don't isolate yourself inside this topic. You are there. You are there. You are there. You are there. So, Bitterness isolates us. When we are bitter, we push people away. We isolate ourselves. Emotionally, we are isolated. Spiritually, we are isolated. And so this bitterness might not completely be um, by... Uh, it might be that you are asking God for something and then you got bitter with God. But that thing you are asking God for, why is it that you don't greet the people that have similar things? If you are not bitter against them. So, bitterness stifles our growth. It prevents us from learning. It prevents us from learning from mistakes. It prevents us from learning and growing. As a matter of fact, bitterness prevents us from celebrating. Celebrating others, celebrating things, celebrating people. Celebrating anything around us. When they are clapping, kilo wu walori. Should I give you an example? Okay, let's look at the Bible. We're not looking at us. We're not looking at people. Let's look at the example. Remember that uh, brother that collected money from the father, collected everything, his own uh, inheritance, and went away and finished eating everything. When he finished eating all his inheritance, he now came back home, and the father was now killing ram for him. Ah, ah. But I was mean of all this now. <laughs> but this is not fair. That's book of Luke, chapter 11. Hmm? <laughs> no, chapter 15. Chapter 15. So, the father, the father celebrated this boy, celebrated him in Luke, chapter 15, from verse 11. Celebrated him, celebrated him, and killed Ram for him. Hmm? And so what happened in that scripture that is happening to many of us, that we many of us do? I will look at this scripture like that, and then I think, let's just, let's just quickly look at it. Then he said, a certain man had two sons. Let's go. We read... Um, I think we should read. Okay, so let's go. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me my portion of the goods and, f and that falls on me. So he divided into, into, into his livelihood. And what happened in verse 13? And not many days after, the young son gathered all his things and left the house. Verse 14. So when he left the house, but when he had spent all that he has, there arose a severe famine where he went to and in the land. And then he began to be in want. So he was hungry. And then jump to verse 20. Jump to verse 20. Jump to verse 20. So in verse 20, and then he rose and came to his father. But when he was still a distance away from the father, what did the father? The father saw him afar off, and the father ran, ran, you know, and they fell on his neck and kissed this boy. But what was the Right? And me that have been around. Can you see? Immaculate, you get that story. The other one that uh, came is 8, 8, 6 a.m. and is collecting 1 million. And the one that came at 6, 6 p.m. and is collecting 1 million. Yeah? Can you see the story? Are we here? <laughs> so, and the, baba, and the father, and then the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against thee and, I've, and, 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 and in your sight, and I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. So, Father, forgive me. But the father said to him, Servant, bring out the best robe and put on him and put a ring in on him and sandal on his feet. And verse 23 says, And bring the fatted calf here and kill it and let us eat. 
Next verse. <laughs> For this my son was dead and is now found. Hey, so brother, sister, this is your turn. Now you now can't see. Older brother. Say older sister to your neighbor. <laughs> say older sister to your neighbor. Older brother. Older brother. If his brother, say older brother. If his sister, say older sister. <laughs> older sister. <laughs> I'm going to preach a sermon on older brother one day. <laughs> older brother. <laughs> so his older son was in the field. And as he came and drew near to the house, he heard music and dancing. Ah, Chloe Shelley. <laughs> so, look. So, he called one of the servants and asked, what are these things that is happening here? And then, Chloe Shelley, you know, like we say it in the language of today. <laughs> and he said to him, your brother has come back, eh? And because he has he was received him safe and sound, eh? Your father has killed the fatted calf. Wow. <laughs> but he was angry. Why? Legitimate anger. Right? <laughs> he was angry. So when you got angry, sin not or let me. Eh? <laughs> he was angry. I will not go in. Are you with me? Therefore, his father came to him and pleaded with him. Immaculate one lay now. You know? <laughs> oh. I love the Bible. So complete. So, so modern. Eh? The Bible is so modern. So today. Ah. And he responded to his father. Ah, ah. This many years I've been serving you. I never transgressed your commandment at any time. And yet you never gave me a younger goat. Not talk of even calf. <laughs> that I might make merry with my friends. Verse 30. <laughs> But as soon as this son of yours came, <laughs> I'm going to end this teaching here. I'm not going to. I'm not going to give you action point. I'll give you action point uh, to start next to start next class <laughs> because I think I think this point eh, as 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 a humorous as I'm putting it, ah, calls for a deep reflection of how we brothers of Jesus have made people not to be able to even sit in the things of God because of how much we have envied and destroyed. Because as soon as this son of yours came, who has devoured your livelihood? He has lived his riotous life. A killing fatter car for him. Eh? Ah. Friends, This thing that is called um, envy, it calls for us to reflect deeply. It calls for us to reflect deeply on it. It doesn't look like, it doesn't look like uh, it's anything major. And for a matter of fact, if I did not, sh by God's grace, share the touchlight on it in my own heart, I will not be shedding the touchlight on it in your heart was because um, a light came onto my heart about it that I should just... It was my reflective, my reflection time. I was, on, I was away. I was on the break, right? And during my break time, I had reflections. And so it was my reflection that got me to this point to see this thought. It's subtle, but... I remember we used to sing what song? Is thy hand right with God? Is thy hand right with God? Wash in the crimson blood. Ha! I don't, I don't forget some of this song. My wife, do you remember that song? You remember that song? Oh, you remember the song, Daniel? Ah, I wonder. <laughs> I want to ask your age. <laughs> okay, do you know it? <laughs> Oh, that's bottom line just for us to check our hearts, check our hearts, um, our relationship with one another. Like I said, these thoughts are about things that can destroy us. They are subtle. They are little, little foxes that breaks the vine.
little, little foxes that were not. They are just little. They are subtle. They are just subtle. They are not things that we we'll call big sins, are they? But seriously, let's burn our hearts this evening. Let's burn our hearts this evening. God of heaven, we ask you tonight that you open our hearts of understanding. Let it be that what we have heard, we will not just be hearers only, but will be the people that will reflect on these things and make it a part of our life every day in the name of Jesus. Let's help us to make a part of a, this a part of our life. We will not just live life without making good sense of everything. Help us that this will help our sense of judgment in our relationship with God, you, and with man. Let this help our relationship. Thank you, Father, Lord. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, this Friday is the video for the month, for the month of October. And if you're not able to attend, you can stream on YouTube, via YouTube. And this Sunday is also our communion Sunday. I think we have another announcement. The workers meeting. Workers retreat. I think it's on, on the, let me get, November. 9th and 10th of November. Right, that's Saturday and Sunday. So the ninth, we are all going to Ikeja, but on the tenth, which is Sunday, we'll be here. All right. Um, any other announcement? Building projects. Okay. All right. Let's rise up to our feet. Let's rise on our feet. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you for today. We thank you for your word your word that has lighted our hearts, we pray that we will be doers and not hearers alone. We will not just hear, but we will do. We will do such that our hearts will not be hardened towards you, towards your word in the name of Jesus. Help us such that the very words that we have heard will transform our lives and our experiences in the name of Jesus. That by your spirit and by your help, we will let go of everything that we need to let go and do better in the name of Jesus. Help us, Lord. In the name of Jesus, help us and let us let us trust in you. Help us and to, to rely on your strength, on your power, on your ability in the name of Jesus. We are transformed by your word. Your word has the ability to transform us. And we declare that we will be transformed by your word in the name of Jesus. Father, we bless your name. We thank you for the privilege to bring into your house. We pray that the, 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 the offering that has been given will be used for the furtherance of your kingdom in the name of Jesus. And for those who were not able to give, we pray that there is, there is provision made available. For every single person that was able to give, there is multiplication in the name of Jesus. So that you'll be able to give more to your house in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. We bless your name. We thank you for today. We thank you for this week. Because you are, you, are, you are going with us and you are still walking with us. You have gone ahead of us. We bless your name because you have not left us alone. Neither have you left us to ourselves. We have you. We have everything. 
we walk with you. We are not confused in the name of Jesus. And so as we go into the remaining days of this week, we pray that you will lead us, you will guide us, you will help us, you will keep us, you help us to do your word to do your word, the words that we have heard this evening. You help us to stay by it, to do it in the name of Jesus. Because the, the funny thing is when you hear things like this, the chance for you to now practice what you have learned will now, will now present itself more than ever. So we pray that in this week we are sensitive in the name of Jesus. Your spirit will guide our hearts, it will lead us aright in Jesus' name. Help us not to fall, but help us to stand, help us to do your word. It will be difficult, but let the flesh, let the flesh be yielded yield to your word. Let our flesh yield to your word in the name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Jesus. We bless your holy name. We thank you for your provision, your provision over every single person. We thank you because you are providing for us. You are a providential God. You are Jaira. Thank you because you have not left us to ourselves. We all know you, Jesus. We bless your name. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen and amen. Let's share the grace and fellowship grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Good night, everyone. <laughs>